aunties, uncles in the community, and also a big group of monks <laughs> witnessing them, them, themselves and their kūrigo on stage is such an honour as it always is hosting and, and providing space for other communities. Shania is now um, working on her next full-length piece and is also writing a screenplay. Screen, uh, uh, slide three, please, right? Thank you. So um, I'm actually going to name these people. Um, this is a slide uh, from Breaking Ground. So we also had a writing festival inside our festival. Um, and it actually, Breaking Ground Playwrights Festival was the precursor to Kiamo and began in 2010, five years before Kiamo started to exist. To initially provide a platform for Māori and Pacifica playwrights and playwrights in developing of their scripts. Both me and I are playwrights and screenwriters and have a very strong bias towards that art form. So uh, any playwrights or screenwriters out there, we're gone. Most recently, uh, this, this picture here is from artists from 2017 to 2024. So I'll quickly go through um, from uh, your left to right. Uh, at the furthest end is uh, Cambodian, uh, Khmer Cambodian writer Serena So. Next to her is New Wayan um, artist Ali Kofua. Next to Ali is uh, Filipino writer and producer and actor Sean Rivera. Um, oh, and next, <laughs> next to uh, Sean is uh, Samoan poet and playwright Grace Taylor, who spent his time here in, in Hawaii. Um, and next to Grace is Samoan writer, director, actor uh, Nakano Kini. Who is also happy to be uh, married to Sarita So. And next to Nakano is Korean New Zealand uh, writer and producer Nayan Lee. And finally, here, Maori, uh, Wahini Maori playwright, Shirley Kahu. Um, we again had the privilege to nurture the words of these writers. And most recently, as I said, Filipino writer Sean Rivera, who's written a beautiful piece based around two piano pieces that he composed. He worked on that. Um, with Nyon's piece, it was a theatre sitcom that she created that was picked up by one of her big companies. And with Sarita, it was, um, and it was just slide later, one of her works digging to Cambodia. And in June 2024, oh, she's not up there. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, this June, we are developing a musical with Chinese New Zealand writer Cassandra T. So again, it's um, a continuation of our connection with, the, with our um, Asian China and what's going on. Slide four, please, by the The Morning After by Aki Kuru in 2021. A solo work by Tamil Sri Lankan artist Aki Kuru Ahi has been a long time collaborator with Kota Productions and Kiaman Festival as an artist and also as a producer. His work, The Morning After, is about the effects of the 2004 tsunami on a small coastal village in Sri Lanka and a young Kiwi, a young Kiwi born Sri Lankan, who visits the devastated village and the ghosts who inhabit it. Ahi became a New Zealand arts laureate along with myself in 2022. Slide five, please. Thank you. Slide five. She's not in this photo, but um, uh, this is to acknowledge and thank you to the amazing Julie Xu, a Chinese New Zealand writer, filmmaker, producer, photographer, and activist. Um, Julie has worked with us since the inception of Kiamu Festival primarily as a photographer, but also as a producer of our art um, Bebop Solidarity panels, especially in 2021. And does, and 
sharing many of the elements of activism and that she led the artists for Aotearoa, artists for um, Tiriti or Waitangi, and is very, very active in um, activist scene in Aotearoa. Many of our iconic shots from Te Amara Festival have been taken by Julie. And if you visit our website, you'll see quite a few of them, and a lot of them are by her. Julie is also fluent in Te Reo and Māori. You saw the photograph of these two before, and here they are again. This is the slide um, which relates to Digging to Cambodia, written and performed by Sarita in 2019. Um, a Khmer Cambodian writer, Sarita Kosomatso, and her solo work Digging to Cambodia. The words, movement, and songs from Cambodia's 1960s rock era, Digging Cambodia is a letter to the past, present, and future self. It asks us all, what is worth remembering? It's a rock and roll homage to her family's flight from war torn Cambodia and their resurrection in Aotearoa. Tarita is an award winning writer of the first New Zealand Cambodian group, Yang Yang's Legacy, in 2014. She, along with her husband, Simon Reiser, director, Natana Kenny, lead IP Soul Production, a Cambodian Samoan theatre film production house in Aotearoa. They recently had a production of uh, Oli Pipilo at our biggest theatre in Aotearoa, the um, Auckland uh, Theatre Company, um, to sold out the season. The majority this time it was uh, Natano taking the lead, and the majority of the work was in Samoan and not translated. And the community have shifted, and we, we don't need translation. We never have. It's those who are not us who have needed. Um, thank you, Tyler. Uh, it was also pointed out to me that <laughs> Kiamo Festival board member Eric Nan is also a Chinese New Zealander. <laughs> and when I returned to Aotearoa, I began rehearsals for one of my new plays, um, Na Rori Rori, um, it means the beards, um, um, with a fabulous young Mongolian New Zealand actor. In the car. I see artists and builders, not ethnicity. So, for 2025, evolving on from this, we are embarking on a new and exciting record or journey. And that is the beginning of working with international indigenous artists from Asian communities uh, for, for more sons in Taiwan. Hawaiian people and the Ainu Japanese artists from Japan. This is after an exchange with Taiwanese producers coming to the Kiyomara Festival in 2023 and an Ainu uh, artist visiting us in 2021. I was asked by one of their younger producers um, why these people must work. This is really easy um, for me to answer. And again, it's about connecting, centering, and building. These two indigenous nations, in particular, are like our Ohana here, Kanakama Oli, our cousins. How may you ask? Through researchers and documentary makers who we have discovered, we are very close linguistically with our connections, that our people can speak to each other across oceans. It is similar to us here in Hawaii and to our whanau in Lapa Nui. Um, again, my daughter was in Lapa Nui and messaged me and said, Perhaps we can order to each other with ease. It shows us, as was said in the show last night, we are great travelers, we are great communities. Um, from my first investigations around Papa, I thought we had very little in common. But what I soon discovered that was that we were we were coming from different ends of the spectrum, but wanting a similar outcome to create an extra spaces for selling good voices. Thank you to Haile, Leilani, 
in the Kata Farma for advising me. Thank you for advising me to work on these plays. As a playwright and as a creator, I, I don't get that opportunity very often. To you all, I say, no my Haramai, no my Haramai Kite Kite Kiaman Festival 2025. We're on from May 1st to June 14th. That's a bad business, right? Um, in Te Whanganui Atara, and I'll repeat it, May 1st to June 14th for a two week period in Aotearoa, and you are all welcome. No my other my hiki my kaki mai. I'll close with um, a beautiful way of uh, that was so surprising for me that was sung at the end of the first keynote um, speaker on the first day we were here. A song that simply says, in love, in hope, in peace to us all. No reira, ke ngā koutou, ke ngā koutou, ki ora kuhu i mai tātou tātou. Ka Te aroha, te whakapono, me te rāma, li e me tātou, te aroha, te
when we feel the rain or we feel the sun. There's a story behind that. Maybe that's an ancestor reaching out. So, Baka Papa or genealogy is not just to people, right? It's to our Aina, right? It's to the people, of course, that connects us. And then to those foundational um, environmental aspects, right? Water, wind, rain, earth, yeah, um, sun, all of those different elements, ocean, the waterways, the rivers, the streams, our kupuna are there, right? The mauna, right? Our kupuna are there. Um, and then, real quick, somebody went to school and did a business degree and not a theater degree. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Economics major. <laughs> so amazing. Yeah. Um, that's why he's able to do all the cool stuff he does now, I think. <laughs> right. Um, okay. Leilani, we're going to shift into the plenary. Yes. Is there, did you want to share? I was going to, no, yeah. I was going to follow up. Other than to introduce the other plenary. Yes, please. Thank you. Please, please. please. Um, so we have Lucy Burns, who also served as an advisor dramaturg uh, for the, one of the 10 minute play groups. And we have Miss uh, Nikishi, who is coming on, uh, she, as you know, our board president, but she was also a director of one of the groups. Um, and then Tony, who originally was an advisor dramaturg, but we ended up pulling him in to also direct. So he is both one of the advisors and one of the directors. So we have um, one of the duels who helped sort of nurture those plays um, from the group on the conversation. Okay, but would you like to sit too? Okay, sure. Okay. <laughs> Representative from Ainu people and 
of work. So that's really kind of cool. Um, maybe lastly, I'm, I'll just hand the mic to you and we'll start maybe with just a, a response, a quick general response from what we just heard. What resonated for you? Oh my gosh. Oh, I love how to see everyone. Um, you always take it to life with that high end one. Yes, <laughs> that was really creating to create. Mahalo. My, my staff knows I do that because there's so much to process all of this, right? Uh, first of all, Mahalo for being inspiring. Sharing with us so many things to the virus. It's powerful and uh, it's fun to connect all of what we're doing in, in different uh, spaces and with the, with the different communities. I think uh, I would want a race to actually organize and support building and rebuilding the community. So, um, and how we uh, you would say, uh, and there's the something, and I actually want to share this. I don't say this out of a place of engineering. I say this out of as a place of pride, as we were saying earlier, being those who strive, those who fly, those who come together and continue the work. Um, that I, so that's that I don't say, and I am a descendant of um, survivors and non survivors. Of World War, U.S. World War II concentration camps. So um, it was so important for me to hear your comment uh, and all that you shared with us because it's affirming how we are, um, you are connecting and you're supporting folks to center who they are, truly who they are in an authentic way, and also um, as we do go in these new times and these. Technology now, and all these ways that we can connect. And I deeply appreciate how you were doing that with all of the slides you showed us with the various communities. Um, so that, that's one of my the many massive of flavors of how you inspired some aspects of the I want to share too that um, one of the, as you were speaking, I was recalling that all my years in Los Angeles, when every black race came to town, uh, Samoan, uh, Maori, gangster, I would draw everything. I wouldn't go to theater. I would, I, theater was left behind. <laughs> I would go and I would attend this dance company's, dance theater company's work because I knew there was some medicine there, there was something there that was so friendly. And the power of the work of the way they brought the creativity of the voices out on stage was so inspiring to me. So just another beautiful way that your people's identities that inspire us internationally all over the world. So Mahalo. That's me. <laughs> I'm Lucy Burns, and I'm really, uh, I'm not going to get to this Aina, on this Aina, um, invited here for the purpose of the contest, and specifically as one of the advisors for the 10 minute play. And I'll, I'll also share some of the things about the history of our nation. But I'm really grateful to be here and be nourished by how the poets, uh, its land, and water, air, people, and stories. I'm always grateful to be invited to follow your lead, to follow your lead and be asked to work in solidarity as we collectively uh, respond responsibly to uh, the call of strengthening indigenous and local um, theater. So, much mahalo, everyone. Um, and I'll say more about this tomorrow. Um, I also come from the NCD territory of the Gabulino Tonga peoples, where I live and work. 
And specifically, I think in the neighborhood in Los Angeles, that's founded on one of the first expropriated indigenous lands in Calabas. So that's, that's me. <laughs> um, and, and I'll express more gratitude again tomorrow when we have more time, but I wanted to speak to this one to you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Tony, for your, for your beautiful keynote. Um, many things about it struck me, but, but one of the things, um, that I really appreciate that we sounded from the wilderness to the toys um, to nothing like in Micronesia and all the performances here are is this image of navigation and the project of navigation and how these stories, what you're offering us is to help us na navigate how to be with each other in our differences, right, in our similarities, in our difficulties. Which is so much needed at this moment, right? And to, but to, that beautiful image of that when they came here and they just open up this, yeah. I was like, that's it. You're giving, yeah, you're giving us, you're navigating us, you're leading us. And we take turns leading each other and following each other. And that's what I really heard from a lot from you, what you shared with us today. Together and no more of that. But I just want to offer that theme that I feel is following and leading. And also, just in awe that if you need to be 10 minute place, just in awe of being a part of being able to work on, on stories and help artists and art makers realize what their vision is. And I've heard that in all the work that you're amazing that you're doing. Phenomenal. One person. <laughs> um, and I'm going to say that um, Ova and I have the privilege of meeting Jorge and Didia thanks to Kiki and Heidi, because we happen to be going to Aotearoa and we're like, where's the community people? Where's the people? And we met Jorge and Jorge introduced us to Sarita and I forget our last sister's name. Shania. Thank you. <laughs> Shania. And, Shania, and both of them were just so appreciative of you, Hone, and they were and you're supporting their work. And tell me if I'm wrong, but what they what my understanding of what they said was that funding in New Zealand is there's Maori funding and then there's everybody else funding. And the everybody else, especially in our field, tends to be what they talk about. And they have gone, you have been a champion of their work, of uh and receiving their work. Um, because of course the Pateha are not taking care of their Asian American or Asian American models, <laughs> the, the non-white theater practitioners. And um, I think it's just amazing that the indigenous um, Maui are the ones who are supporting the immigrants and the immigrant um, practitioners and theater practitioners. I don't know if you want to. Oh, I also wanted to mention, Sarita had been accepted into the festival of 2020. So she would have been here in 2020 because uh, her, that solo piece that Tony was talking about was, would have been in process had we been able to go through with it. Um, but anyway, I wonder if you would want to talk on that at all. About the funding and stuff? Yeah. About, well, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or support, um, I mean, you already talked about support. Yeah. Artists, but, yeah. Oh, that's um, um, as I mentioned um, previously, it's just kind of natural. Um, I'm just really curious, constantly curious. And uh, I think, as I said, you know, that talk on my parents. Um, yeah, so my dad was a forestry worker and my mom's a cleaner. You know, and yet somehow they got all nine of us to either go to tertiary education or to their own businesses. And um, I wrote a play uh, about our family moving from our traditional lands to another land for employment. So basically we were immigrants in our own country. So I kind of knew firsthand that feeling um, of the need for it. So it's kind of been one of the engines that drives me in regards to it. And when you show up, there's actually funding, uh, there's Pacifica funding, and I made that there's Maori Pacifica and New Guinea. Um, and the, the leader of the Pacifica funding, Matauri Tukurari, is an amazing, she's incredible. Um, so one of the things that we, we talked and got together through the pandemic, and I'll get to it really quickly, was that um, I got all of the key Māori uh, theatre and dance companies together 
and thus you see that, that, you know, and, uh, that judgment of them, the G8, is actually not a um, <laughs> and, and said, uh, hey, are you all good? And they're yeah, we're good, we're really good. And then did the same thing with Pacific Atlantis as well. And Moffat just thought it was amazing that during that period of time, she knew there were going to be big pockets of money to secure $13 million for Pacific festivals over a five year period. So we were really aware that resource was going to be there and then gone. So we had to plan for the future. So it's one of the key things with, with us. But I'm um, really right in regards to non Maori and non Pacifica, um, it's tough. Um, so it was really simple for us. And um, Sarita is one of um, media's best friends. Um, Ahilan is, is as well. Um, he's actually about to perform in a show um, called Hunting and Cracking at the Public Theatre in Munich. Um, very soon. So uh, it's just for us it's to get that, um, get that space is really what it comes to. But yeah, it's one of the key things that um, I just wonder if it's the amazingness of our communities is not giving the opportunity. So one of the other communities that we're working hard with at the moment is the African communities in Ontario and South America as well, and just um, going, hey, bring your stuff. You're amazing, and let's do things. So yeah, I, I really want to thank you for mentioning that, and, and, and it's just seeing the amazingness of um, our arts, and and as you see, you know, um, with you know, you know, like, it's so cool. It's so great seeing um, this kind of that person too. You look at them and you go, wow, how did they do it? Yeah, it's that thing. So um, yeah, uh, I think it's that. It's, it's not as difficult as it looks, and that's what I don't quite understand. That those organisations that are super funded, why they don't have this ability to see beyond themselves is um, really baffling to me. Um, but what we're finding now is that a lot of those big, highbrow, highbrow within the holy uh, institutions are coming towards us and want to be our friends now. So that's been really satisfying. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's because constantly we were just looking forward, you know, and even our young ones. And one of the reasons I started Kyoma, I had a young artist go, Oh, wow, New Zealand Arts Festival's out. And, and I knew what they were doing. They were looking for the three Maori and Pacific shows in the whole festival. And I went, this is rubbish. This is rubbish. You see, they have a pamphlet and they're all out. So it's just those sorts of things because if we were going to do it, it wasn't a change. And I really love it that since 2015 in Aotearoa, there are now five Indigenous led platforms. There is, uh, yeah, it's amazing. The last festival in the East Coast, led by Tonga Waipara, um, the Fao Festival in Ototahi, Christchurch, in the Deep South, which is all in Te Reo Māori, our language, um, Aurumui Festival in the centre in Rotorua, and um, I don't know how they did it, but um, Anna Karini and Tony Tuki Wapo opened a theatre during the pandemic, and it's amazing, it's Māori and Māori. <laughs> So just having those spaces where we don't need to engage um, has really has changed everything. It, it really has because now we have our leadership in the Papua organisations, but then we have our sovereign leadership as well. And it's really changed the amount of work, the type of work. Also, for me, with Kalmo, I, mean, I want our people in those 5,000 centres. Our people could do that. And once we started getting our people in there, now I've got young ones, it's too many of them going, I'm going to show them the 5,000 seat of it. No, 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 do it in 100 seat of it. But I love that moment, and I love that um, move towards it, and I'm talking to Pastor Edwin. Thank you. Because you mentioned the 5,000 seat of it, I want to bring up a lot of people in the social. <laughs> so um, in 2023, we were at the Kiyama Festival. And there was, it was an amazing performance. 
It was a co-pilot performance um, that media put together. And it was in that massive hall. It's a 5,000 seater hall. Um, the most beautiful music, uh, very deep uh, storytelling that was wool interwoven between the music. And it was a concert, in a sense. A concert interwoven with the internet. Amazing. Can you maybe share a little bit about, um, because I know for us, we were just blown away. We were blown away by that community, the raw only community that came out hard and wide. They all came out and they were flat. And we saw, sort of saw something like that yesterday with, you know, nothing Michael about Micronesia, which was awesome. Um, perhaps maybe you could share a little bit about the organizing that went behind that and getting to make that happen because that's a that's a life institution that yeah. we were all in. So if you need a mention. Um so so yeah, thank you, Heidi. It was beautiful having you there. Um but it was um as Heidi said, that, yeah, it's a five thousand seater. Um the Michael Fell Center, and it usually only gets a sink in the orchestra, you know, and those sorts of organizations in there, and I just speak, no, we can do that. And um, also, no, you're not going to love all the Pacific Islands together. It's going to be a cookie. Um, and I'm lucky enough that to be in a part of Bologna as well. And so, um, I did not form here. I came up with the idea, and then, well, let's do this to go like um, a Cook Island University <laughs> Social Club. You know, cool. uh, uh, it should be easy, and holy oh, no. moly. Um, <laughs> That's, yeah, we had five bands. It was a history of spring bands in the Cook Islands. You know, they beautiful. And you had the big dogs. They were all there playing. You would pick up bass. And um, that, that's, yeah, it was tough. So one of the, the biggest problems we had <coughs> was that the powers that they need to help those uh, venues were really reluctant to let us fire it. We go, no, we got the deposit. I can pay the whole lot straight away if you want, you know. And they were really resistant in regards to our communities having these big spaces. So in 2023, we not only get there, we get uh, a work in the opera house that was sold out as well, and the St. James, which is another 3,000 seater. And it was um, mind blowing for the powers that be <coughs> that saw this community. And they said it itself, one of the music traditions once they said, I've never stood on the stage ever. I've never had the opportunity to do that in front of our people. And you know, and it got to the point where everyone was just up dancing, and you could see the ushers back, I give up, I even said, it's too much of a time. Um, but yeah, it was it was the understanding and I felt that last night. You know, that you work hard with the community leaders. You, you know, um, I, I have so much other love for media. I was sitting a couple of rows back in here in the technical, um, the tech for it, and two of the leaders were going, why are they doing that? Who's there? What's doing that? What's doing that? It's just the tech. It's not the show. So can we, can we just keep doing it? And, you know, you know, you know, a lot of love, um, and then they put it all. But I could see you're under a lot of pressure. And that's something that working with your community does. You know, um, and we were scared because we thought, if this doesn't work, that's over. We can never go back to the Cook Islands, you know? Um, <laughs> but and it worked. And wow, it really worked to the point where the community leadership came back to us and said, you have to do this again in 2025. So we've got the venue. We've got a different way of approaching it. Maybe it's bringing it all together. But then they went, okay, why don't we have, do people here know what the Edinburgh tattoo is? Nice. Yeah? It's this massive thing. For those who don't, it's this massive thing. It's mostly in military, actually, in Edinburgh, at the castle that has thousands of people. So we went, we're going to do a Cook Islands tattoo, you know, in 2027. And we're going to have, Thousands of our people there, and we're going to really shift the needle of what we 
as Maori to subject indigenous people as a substitute in this landscape. So it's been really interesting. When the group got out and we were doing the way to do social, all these international producers came up. And they were each other. They really, that was one thing I really understood. Once we, and I'm sure you all know it when you're successful, once we get successful, they come and cannibalize us. Right? And it's natural. And you go, it's going to happen. Just go with it. Just go with it because they can't do what we do. Yeah. You know? And um, I was fortunate enough in the 90s in Aotearoa that Maori theatre was just exploding everywhere. And, um, we were in all the venues, big ones, everything like this. And then the Papua institutions went, we're going to do it too. We can do the Maori theatre. Um, <laughs> no, it didn't work out. It did But the worst thing for us is that they didn't just block us. And you didn't see model work on the main stages for almost a decade because it didn't work for them. And so we were left to do it ourselves. So I hope that, that um, answers that value that, yeah, I, now as I said, our artists are thinking about massive spaces and that it's normal to see our people there. It's normal to make works for you know, a 10 seater to a 5,000 seater. And we can fill them. And that's one of the other things that's been so heartening. And it's not only Maori Pacific or Indigenous, it's our Papua brothers and sisters that are coming to that. That's the coolest time, right? Two weeks just partying and meeting up people is so cool. And it's usually the case that we find them in Ontario. You put it in front of people and go, if you found it, they will come. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
relationship with India people, sir. And I think um, moving forward, that that evolved. I don't think it disappeared completely, but that sense of stewardship did not continue. So we've really taken that back up. And um, gosh, are we? Some of you may know this too. I think you have a, a melon playwright residency maybe at, at the theater. Um, when we came in, uh, this new team came in, Vera Starbart was put here to China with uh, our resident playwright. And so my first season was her play, Devilfish, and I was like to direct it. So that really kicked up our commitment to colonizing and supporting the indigenization as well. And uh, since then, we continue to uh, do our best to make trust, trusted relations with uh, President Peterson, who is the president of Central Council of Cooper Title, as well as with Dr. Rosita World of the Alaska Heritage Institute. And with that, we're so grateful that we now have a co-commission, co-production with, uh, not say as a time, Southeast Alaska Heritage Institute, um, for the first Indian opera, all of them. And it's a pink Vera is our librettist. Ed Linfield is our composer. Uh, Hune Les Twitter, who I know you know, is our culture bear, lady culture bear for Canadian. And then we have uh, uh, all these folks have grown up, you know, as Alaska Native Shield Alaska and on Canadian on me. And we have we actually have an orchestrator who is also Canadian. So an entire creative team. It's been amazing. And we were able to do some developmental workshop for all uh, either Alaska Native or the indigenous, some from Hawaii came because I know you have uh, with your music uh, language, native language revitalization. So that was really powerful. And from other Pacific Northwest communities. Um, I'll also share that uh, I don't think we've said this too publicly. Perseverance um, is really, really uh, connected and just committed to language vitalization, but also the art culture ways of life subsistence living. So one of the ways we navigate is if like say one of our culture bearers is um, you know it's that season where they have uh, they have deer, they have to dress it. We say, okay, we reschedule the rehearsal. That's it. We must support way of life. And it's so beautiful how generous everyone becomes in in the learning of these practices that it may not be native traditions. And then pretty soon you start to notice a beautiful exchange. They brought deer, they brought medicine, they exchanged food and other ways with everybody. So um, I was also having a campaign a little bit. I got to um, a visit from the National Endowment for the Humanities, Dr. Lowe, the current chair. She came to visit with her team. And we were talking about that. She said, it's the concern of uh, non-BIPOC communities is that they're going to get left out and we'll take over. We're like, no, we don't have a kid. No. <laughs> See, we talked, we had a great conversation about integration. If you integrate, and, you know, revitalization, I think it's maybe. Everyone's collective liberation comes along. Aloha comes out. Um, and so things like that have been happening, and we navigate that and support, and it's changing our processes and models of how we work. And one of the things I'm most proud of, we're not there yet, we're very comfortable with this. We are working to redesign um, and look at how to mitigate, eliminate burnout in the theater. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> We uh, talk about what is the most humane way. And that's inspired by Latina people and all of you too that have inspired us to work differently and to support and respect uh, the lessons and learnings from since time immemorial. And I shared this with the NEA, the National Council on the Arts. They asked me, what do you think uh, about our future? I said, I think the future is extremely hard. And they said, why? We have all these issues. I said, because we're really indigenous. They said, what do you mean by that? I said, 
Remember, digits are not in the uh, diorama back in the museum. Well, we're, we're you know we're decolonizing the new indigenous museums, thank goodness. But there's this there's this idea that it's from the past. I said, oh how no, it's so present. And these are the communities that I'm witnessing. You know how to bring the lessons since time immemorial, honoring ancestors, elders that help us to do that, to honor our ancestors and elders, remember that. And then they have so elegantly come and integrated the contemporary, the current generations. It's so exciting to see that come together. Those collaborations within your communities is so inspiring. It's not one for the other. This is Beautiful creative process that I'm watching unfold, and it is we can all come together. It just sends the message. The last thing I'll share about navigating is that I'm starting to continue and be uh, working to put this in, in place and in, into action that perseverance is, um, you know, on Turtle Island, in a lot of the movement spaces for social justice, they're starting to talk about joy as resistance. So critical, so critical. We've been at the front line to continue to be at the front line. I don't know you know this, but my brother, we continue to be at the front lines. Um, even many of us taking our theater practices like stage management, staging, <laughs> and writing into how we actually orchestrate that action. And um, uh, so that's been powerful and important. I think we've been orchestrating and bringing in human justice to those processes like we've never had. So we've been involved in there. But around joy, I come and I get to visit Heidi as we've been organizing over this time. And I think, oh, Aloha is the original joy in resistance practice. It's so deeply embedded in the music, the harmonies. There's got to be science around the harmonies and how that recalibrates our vibrations in our body and our chemistry for healing and for our liberation. I just, uh, I feel that even being here and your aloha, all of you, your, your teams, and all your communities here, and the hollow of me is very healing. I think you must be the original joy and resistance in your life practice. I'm trying to bring it back to the 10 minute phase. Um, so, but also, Lucy is an incredible, if you don't know Lucy's work, she's an incredible scholar um, and has done a lot of transnational work. Um, with the people, the practitioners, um, as well as being American artists. Um, the, uh, what, what was the book we had? Oh, Forget Jeannie recently, right? And then also this incredible work. So, trying to bring it back to the 10 minute phase, given all your knowledge. Um, what are your, some of your thoughts on the 10 minute plays that we got to work on? I know you and Zach are old time collaborators, uh, but you also got to work with uh, the leads, right? <laughs> Ito Uchi and Lee Kaluna. How was how that for you in relationship to the work you already do? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm glad to get to help with the 10 minute plays. Um, I just, I, first of all, I just, I'm so honored again to be with you. Been invited for as a dramaturg, it's it's rare because I have this other full time job that I do. So, um, <laughs> so when I'm able to say yes to a dramaturg, it's just such a gift and an honor, and yeah, it, it's really sacred because it's you know working with art directors to to work with to realize the vision, the narrative, the story. Um, and I also want to um, say that as a fan of Sajana, I follow I follow the community And so that that's from how I get there. I just I just love listening to the stories and so Whatever I can do, we can do that. Um, and so, yeah, so that's the first of the things that's going to come to my face. And I want to talk about the poem itself. Sure. Yes. And I want to talk to you. 
save money and maybe we'd be less leaky. This is that. That particular form. No, I'm hearing more about this. Uh, I, it's one of my favorite forms, really. So once I'm all about it, uh, from the one minute to three minutes to ten minutes. And partly because of my own limitations, I just kind of remember. <laughs> and so, um, but I really love it. And also the, the teacher. It is such a hit in the classroom, right? When you work onto a form, there's so much to think about for this but also everyone's all have all have one. So it's such a hit. Students love it. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it, uh, but it's really that it's so clear in in the actual idea. So I have a it's actually a question people all of you, but also all of the you know producers here, the actors, directors, and playwrights. Again, as an audience member, I love it. I love the short form. I think it's very valuable, and we can take it to other forms and media. But I have a real question, is that something that, you know, I, I, know, I would love to hear more about why it, it found itself here in this festival and how, and then also if it's something that folks would invest in, like, what is, what is the function of the short form in this gathering, or even like if people still do some things, I know the season thing is also something that maybe we transform it now, but that, it gives us a real question. I guess that's coming. I really love it, um, but it's, it's I'm just wondering. I hope that answers so So, my thinking around it is um, you know, I, with past podcasts, we've had showcases, we have not mentioned everything. And you know, you guys remember who's on? Uh, we had we always had some posts, and then we had people doing uh, five, ten minutes or something like that, scenes or something. And it's sort of some were more successful than others. You know, things that were encapsulated within those five, ten minutes were more successful than like a scene from a play that depended on the rest of the play to inform that scene were not as successful. Um, and then in past contests, we've had a uh, stage reading series. Sometimes they were successful, sometimes they weren't successful. Um, and so I think our thinking around it, my thinking around it was that this 10 minute play format would give us an opportunity to encourage playwrights to write something new, to kickstart something, um, and also to be able to feature more artists because. Putting up a full production was going to, like, we wanted other play, like, oh, can we do, let's do it at Sakamoto play. Oh, well, that means we have to do a whole other thing. So, <laughs> like, if we don't have that capacity, um, that wasn't the intention of a festival, right? A conference. So, this was our way of being uh, people to commission artists to kickstart something new. And we had a general sort of suggestion of um, something related to what's happened between 2020. Now, and that was part of our justification in even doing podcast things. Like, if this is a way that we can help uh, playwrights work on something new or work on something to move to a place where they're willing to share it with us, um, that uh, that's something that I'm very interested in. Contest making sure that we're doing when we go to a new city or a new place is that we're really investing in the artists and especially playwrights. Because once there's the play, then there's the actors and the directors, and then everybody else, the dramaturg, and the dramaturgs yes. who get uh, involved. Yeah. So I mean, that was for me. And, and, yeah, I would love to see it continue. I would love to see our gathering if anyone's interested in collaborating with those artists to complete it to a full length play, um, or if you could start doing the New Works Festival at some point, it would be amazing. So. Those are some, and yeah, and then funders I did to see that to see to me the depth of artists in Hawaii is what people don't understand. Primarily, what's gone to the content has been Japanese American, and that's not Hawaiian. So, I really wanted to, we, we can't even just with three productions, four productions, we can't show you the depth and diversity 
of the artists that are here in Atlanta. So that was my attempt to like see if we could share people with them. So I'll just add one thing and then we'll need to wrap up because the food is ready. It's food for us. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we had about two dozen names of playwrights we wanted to invite. And then we looked at the budget again. <laughs> and we said, okay, we can maybe do nine. And we were able to do 10. Uh, we honestly wanted to invite 24. Um, and who knows, maybe if we build on this, maybe next time around there, there can be 24. Um, and then it was logistical, you know, we're going to have nine writers, how many directors, how many dramaturgs. We don't want to have one dramaturg for every project, you know. And then again, going back and forth, thank you, Kayla, for wanting the budget. <laughs> And, and I think uh, what we saw take place and transpire this past couple days with those 10 minute plays is a, is a really fruitful seed that was planted. And I imagine if we water that seed again, that we could build it into a festival. Might be its own thing. So, Mahalo and Nui, yeah, Leslie, Ame, Lucy, and my co chair, Lakeman. Mahalo, everyone, for sharing. I encourage everybody to go and have something to eat. The day is complete. Let's lala, let's enjoy our, one another's company, have some food some social intercourse, yeah.